Hello and welcome back to Long War of the Chosen XCOM 2. My name is Saiken and we're going to take a look at uh, even more guides today. Before we jump into the guides, a shameless plug as always, please don't forget to subscribe and leave a comment uh, down below. Today's topic is going to be the soldiers and uh, the basic classes and changes that um, at uh, that uh, Long War of the Chosen has made to the game. I don't want to go into the individual classes too much at this point. We're going to have a deep dive video for each of them separately. But what I want to do is I want to take a look at soldier stats and which classes they generally classify um, for. Because that is important to understand before we even going to cover any of uh, the material of the detailed classes. So the first thing that you will see when you install the Long War uh, model is that there will be more base attributes and they are actually important. Let's go through them uh, one by one. The first thing is generally understanding that uh, soldiers will always be created unequal. That means that, these, uh, that there will be some soldiers that excel in certain stats and uh, there will be other soldiers that uh, are um, quite bad at the same stat, which makes it more meaningful to pick and choose the classes for your specific soldiers. Some people playing Long War even insist in having a mod installed that allows you, even with a standard first uh, gate crasher promotions, uh, to have a say in what kind of class they want to promote a certain soldier in. Uh, now, whilst I'm playing modless, um, I can tell you it makes a bit of a difference, but it is also not the end of the world. Meaning, if you do have a certain class, uh, soldier with a certain set of skills, and they are not perfect, then you can still very much win the game, even if they are not um, the absolute best of the best of the best. So let's look at the stats here. Uh, stat number one is health. Uh, the uh, higher the amount of uh, hit points is, the more you can um, uh, clearly uh, survive. Uh, the other option or the other topic to know about health is it is also people with more or uh, soldiers with more health uh, will um, spend less time in the sick bay because uh, the percentage of health damage is what's being used for calculating sick times and not the absolute damage that you take. Movement. Oh yeah, uh, standard health for um, starting uh, rookies is 4, can go up to 5 or even 6, can go down to um, up, uh, up to th uh, as low as 3. Um, in terms of quote unquote the value uh, um, of uh, those um, um, different attributes, health has a relatively high value, meaning if you have a rookie that starts with 5 or 6 health, uh, there is a pretty high likelihood that his, his or her other skills will be relatively low, because health costs a lot of building points or character points um, if uh, the AI generates uh, the character. Movement standard is 15, can be as low as uh, 12, can go up to 17 um, uh, from the start, is based Basically, the amount of movement that a character has, the higher it is, clearly the better. Health is good for frontline characters, movement is good for any character uh, really, particularly though for those um, who need to move fast, melee characters as well as scouts. Hacking is uh, the next step, uh, which uh, will determine how much hack bonus you will get from the get-go. This could be even a negative value for some of the rookies. It uh, might be uh, low. Let's see, these are all high values. You get the point. We do have corporals with two hacking, uh, meaning that they probably started with less than uh, zero hacking. We got a rookie here with one. I know for a fact that it can be even uh, lower than that. So um, that's in a nutshell uh, the aptitude uh, for hacking. Clearly uh, some classes uh, like shinobis and, um, and um, the specialists would require or benefit from a higher hacking stat. Keep in mind hacking um, has a variety of uh, effects in uh, long war. Um, specifically the controlling of drones is important so it's not a stat to be underestimated. The next one is dodge, uh, pretty uh, uh, pretty similar uh, to the um, or, uh, to the dodge skill in the in the vanilla game. One noticeable difference is dodge in um, 
in a long war no longer automatically halves the damage it will just decrease uh, the severity of the hit and it kind of goes crit um, into normal hit into glancing hit into um, into a half damage uh, hit so that's kind of the uh, the the table so if you are caught in the open and you successfully dodge it will just be a normal hit instead of a crit if it's a normal hit it can be a glancing hit dealing uh, less damage or even a complete dodge towards dealing only half damage so it's the base stat it can definitely be negative uh, for uh, for some of uh, the uh, for some of the soldiers um, to hit uh, uh, dictates uh, the just general uh, chance of accuracy and willpower uh, determines uh, the ability to not only resist um, uh, mind control and uh, psionic attacks but also to stay focused uh, and not become so tired uh, soldiers with high will really can recover faster now um, of course you will uh, see a lot of guides uh, going in depth into the uh, into the um, perfect starting attributes for soldiers my two uh, cents on uh, these from a guide perspective would be don't sweat it too much. If you are losing, continuously losing uh, missions or having problems, then chances are that there are 101 other topics wrong with your gameplay before these things here really, really matter. Of course, having three hit points stings uh, to begin with as a squatty, specifically if you're an assault, but rest assured, um, as you develop uh, better technology, i.e. Um, better armor and carry vests and uh, carry the additional items uh, that uh, give you temporary hit points, um, the one or two points of difference from the start really do not matter that much. Uh, not to say that they do not matter at all, but they are clearly not that uh, relevant. I do have, for instance, a relatively high level soldiers that only have, um, well, he has more than five hit points. He's wounded, that's why he's down to five hit points. But we do, there are snipers that just generally from the progression get uh, less hit points. Let's take an example here. Look, Master Sergeant Sniper and Hayward only has six hit points. Um, yeah, it is what it is. But there are plenty, plenty of ways uh, to circumvent it. And uh, you can see, since she started with less health, uh, she therefore has an incredible high amount of uh, to hit, which is essentially what the sniper is for. Now, as you are continuing through the game, keep in mind that specifically for, and that only applies to your A team in uh, air quotes, that the A team can get a few additional stats uh, because you can use covert uh, actions which i'm currently doing uh, in order to train them uh, to make them become just a tiny bit uh, better other than that um, here's a general rule of thumb so that you um, that you do not feel overwhelmed by the amount of stats and what you should be looking out for um, and i'll go class by class assaults as a class should generally have a high movement rate and in my perspective um, a decent amount of hit points they can sacrifice um, uh, to hit specifically if you play them as uh, shotgun flanking characters um, second class grenadier grenadiers um, uh, since they often have a lot of equipment loaded on them and really benefit from having a lot of equipment uh, often require a lot of movement. Elsewise, you find yourself specifically on timed missions in the unfortunate situation where the grenadiers uh, will fall behind and can no longer catch up. So grenadiers, in my perspective, are very well served with uh, having a lot of movement. Uh, second and most important uh, topic would probably be uh, aim as well as hit points, uh, which are uh, pretty much good for everyone. Gunners, on the other hand, um, will rely, similar to other uh, damage dealing classes, more on aim. For gunners, I would uh, probably go hit points and aim as the most important uh, topics. Um, that's by far uh, not saying that uh, gunners with a low aim cannot be helpful. For instance here, Mike Bravo, has only 71 aim, and he's realistically speaking never going to be a great 
gunner. However, uh, gunners uh, can also be skilled into uh, area suppression. And as long as you give him the right equipment, Mike can be incredibly helpful. He has a lot of hit points. He has a decent uh, uh, to hit chance. And uh, he might be able to dodge quite uh, quite a bit. So if you're uh, creating him as a tank uh, and as a tank slash support uh, character, it's absolutely fine to, to do that. And I'm using this as one example to illustrate to you that your uh, skills really dictate how you might want to build the characters instead of just restarting the game until you have the perfect skills. <clears throat> For rangers, it's all about aim. Um, they are definitely aim and hit points. They are definitely one of the classes that uh, benefit the least from just a high um, uh, a high movement. Yes, it's great to have a high movement. I find myself, however, m much uh, more often in a situation where I either double move or let them stand in a really nice shooting position and then um, their high uh, aim really begins to shine. Um, I'm not covering, by the way, the hero uh, classes because, uh, quite frankly, uh, they are absolutely phenomenal the way they are. Um, for Sparks, it's whatever, probably um, aim and a bit um, health. They are really more fire support uh, characters and not uh, don't scale that well compared to the other uh, characters. So. Um, I wouldn't sweat it. Sharpshooters aim uh, uh, predominantly. And secondly, I would probably say um, movement to a, to a degree. And if you can afford it, uh, give them some help. Katarina here, for instance, definitely will be trained sooner or later to increase her health from six uh, to more. Shinobi's all about movement. Uh, I would say besides movement, I like to have a high dodge value on them. So whenever I can see movement and dodge value, that's perfect. Uh, hit points are good as well. The dodge value isn't so far important as Shinobi's, at least the way I'm playing them, are uh, very melee focused. And when they are being caught out, we want to make sure that even if they are staying in the open, there is a decent chance for them to uh, avoid certain death. Specialists, in my perspective, hacking, great, um, but not the prime skill, probably the uh, skill number three. I like high hit points on them so that they can survive um, because I'm often playing them as healers. I personally uh, like hacking a lot. And since they are fire support in many of uh, the instances, I'm also giving them a decent uh, to hit chance, kind of average on to hit, but uh, really hit points and hacking in uh, my personal opinion. Technicians is cover removal, high movement, uh, very similar to the Grenadiers. And since they rely more on their uh, gun, I would even give them a higher priority to um, have a high level of aim. That being said, however, you can still see we do have pretty average or mediocre aim and still um, high level uh, technicians that are doing fantastically well uh, without a problem. Good, that's really it. Uh, I hope uh, this uh, gave you an introduction to generally how to skill characters if you can. Uh, try to assign uh, the roles. There will always be the characters that have a low hit point value, a somewhat low aim, and a very moderate uh, movement rate, but are phenomenal in hacking, have a good uh, avoidance, super uh, dope willpower. Um, and you will ask yourself, what am I going to do with them? There are a couple of classes, maybe that is the last tip, um, that really do not mind um, bad skills, so to speak. Um, definitely the specialist comes to mind uh, who is not that um, uh, that dependent on high skills. Uh, a shinobi, even with moderate movement, can uh, work out. Um, and I would probably say as a third uh, class, the gunner is also a very flexible class, even with low um, uh, aim. You could go um, and make an Overwatch supportive uh, gunner. Uh, they don't need to carry by themselves. So that's it from uh, the tips on who should be what. And next up, we're going to dive into the details of every single class. Thank you so, uh, so much for watching and see you in the next guide.